All right, hello YouTube. Um, this is Tim Hungert here, and today we're going to be building a blog type website uh, using PHP and Xamp. Um, so I have the Xamp program uh, running. I downloaded it. You can download it for free. Just Google Xamp, and I have an Apache server running on my local computer. Um, and the way the file structure works. Um, I have this blog I'm going to call it Skunk Unk. It's like my little play on my last name. Um, I might do a personal blog on that, uh, or maybe a fictional blog. I'm not really sure what I want to do with it just yet. Um, and the, so that's in this folder called htdocs, and um, it's right here. It's uh, Skunk Unk. So we have to have it, uh, the, and the htdocs is in the xamp folder. So we have to run it out of that. Um, and then when I go to the browser, I just type in localhost skunk unk, and you'll see this file. I have Visual Studio Code, a text editor open, and I have a, a starting index.php file. Okay? And I need to, since I'm using PHP, I need a server on my computer. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people do blogs in WordPress, which is a great uh, content management system. My idea is to do my own code, which is a lot lighter um, than WordPress, and be able to include a common, uh, a common header, a common footer, and a common sidebar file into um, into this. So we're going to use uh, PHP files. We're going to use the PHP uh, include function to do that. Um, okay, so now I have hello world, but let's say I wanted to include a header and a footer. And this is a basic HTML skeleton. You can write HTML into PHP file. And let's say I want to include a header, footer, and a side. Um, I would start by just doing a little bracket like this, writing PHP, and then I can write include, and then the quotes, header.html, and a semicolon and then a question mark and another bracket. And that's how I include the header in, and I can do the same thing if I wanted to include a footer. So we'll call that footer.html. I'm gonna show you something. We're gonna have an error in a moment. And, I'll, and I'm gonna hit save. We'll go back to my browser. And look, it's gonna give me these, these warnings. Okay, so line 10, line 11, it's no good. So why, why would I be getting those warnings? Well, um, I'm getting those warnings because those files don't exist yet. I have to create them. So let's go ahead and do that. And then let's see if we can draw them in. So I'm going to have a file called header.html. And in that, um, we're going to have a header tag there. Maybe we'll have a nav tag. And I'm using Emmet to do this. So I type A and hit tab, and that gives me a link. Um, say the link is index.php that's going to be my home um, and then a tab will do about.php uh, it's going to be the about and um, and then a tag will do say a contact page contact.php and that's going to be contact and we're going to hit control and save and we also want to do a footer so we're going to call that footer.html and we'll do a footer tag, we'll type footer, hit tab, and then I want to do a parenthesis, I hit P, and then hit tab. I'm going to say copyright, uh, and then I'm going to do an ampersand copy, uh, and then Timothy Unkert, or let's do the year, 2019, Timothy Unkert. Don't steal my information, or don't steal my blog post that, uh, you know, no one's going to read it. But, um, and, I, I just basically I love <laughs> just building websites, picking up, putting them down. But I, you know I don't write anything that is that interesting. But uh, anyway, so, so let's say you wanted to put a copyright there. Okay, so we saved the header, we saved the footer. Let's see if now we're starting to draw them in. And we're still getting an error. Okay. Build opening header. Build opening. Well, that's weird. Okay, let's see. Footer.html. Hmm. Oh. Gotta put the semicolon outside. Okay, let's try it now. Okay, 
So, yeah, that was an error. So, with PHP, it's important where you put the semicolon. Uh, I haven't done much PHP in a little while, so, but you got to put it outside of the parentheses. But like that, I include um, a header, a footer. Let's say I wanted a main part of this page, so I do my main and hit tab. And here I can do a head one, this will be main content, and then maybe a couple paragraphs. And I'm just going to type lorem 100, hit tab, that's going to give me, uh, let me do some word wrap here. Okay, that's going to give me a, a nice paragraph, uh, maybe we'll do three paragraphs, so another lorem 100, hit tab, uh, and then one more paragraph, lorem 100, and hit tab. Okay, so, all right. Oops. Um, okay, so we've got we got our main stuff here. Um, all right, so if I'm looking at this now, now I've got some main content in here. Um, okay, let's say I wanted to add a sidebar. Well, after the main content. I can do another PHP uh, include. Okay, and we're going to do a side.html. And I'm going to remember to put the semicolon outside. Okay, um, and I'll show you. We'll look at the error because we don't have a nice side.html. So we get that error below there. But So now let's create one. We'll do an aside.html. Um, but actually, let's let's change it. Let's make it a side.php. Okay, we're gonna make we're gonna include a PHP file, which you can do as well. Uh, and there's gonna be a reason I'm gonna do that. So PHP, and um, in the aside, we'll do an aside tag here, and we're gonna do a PHP include here, and we're gonna call this recent uh, posts.html, and Put that there, and then um, okay. So we're gonna hit uh, Control Save. We also want to do a file called Recent Posts. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of making like a widget, like you would in WordPress, um, but with code. Um, and, you know, not quite as complex, but let's just have a regular div, um, and then we'll have a H3 heading. We'll say Recent Posts, and then a list of posts and do, um, actually what I can do is I can do L I A um, and do times three I believe and that'll nope that didn't give me quite what I wanted I'll do L I A times three tab uh, it's not gonna do it all right Let's just do li hit tab, a tab, um, and we'll copy this a few times. And these links are going to go nowhere because we haven't created anything yet. Okay, so this is going to be a recent post one. So the advantage of doing this is that it allows me to, um, to only have to update one file and it'll update it throughout the site. Okay, so now let's go here. Okay, so we got the recent po post being pulled in. All right, um, now maybe in my aside, I have another file. Um, we'll call it uh, archives. Another, uh, another file we can update. Okay, um, and let's create that. Create archives.html. And here we'll have another div and another uh, unordered list. And again, we'll do um, a few of these. And I'm thinking of the Emmet abbreviation where I can just quickly do three of these, but it's slipping my my brain. Uh, let's let's make it four. Um, and we'll make these go nowhere. But let's say we wrote in March 2019. Um, we wrote again in April 2019, May 2019, and uh, something in July of 2019. And these would all go to respective pages. 
Okay, so we've got that and probably want a heading also. We'll call that archives. Okay, and we'll see that that's being pulled into the sidebar as well. But, so we don't have any CSS in this yet. So we can go ahead and now take care of the CSS. Okay, so up here, I'm just gonna go here and type link and hit tab and we're going to put the CSS in a folder called CSS and we'll call it style.css okay and here we'll create a new folder call it CSS and then within the folder we'll create a file called style.css okay so and actually within the index um, now nah, we'll we'll just do it do it this way um we'll make it too complicated all right let's do the body and i'm gonna limit the width of the body i'm gonna say the max width is gonna be 900 pixels because i want center of the screen i'm gonna give a margin of auto okay and i'm gonna hit control and save and now we're gonna see what happens so that brings everything into the center okay um, I like the white background that's fine um, but actually before I do that right at the top I want to import a Google font so I'm gonna go over here and open a tab and type in Google fonts hit enter um, and let's just pick up uh, this one Open Sans, I seem to like. Um, we'll import it into the style sheet. So I'm going to copy in between the style tags. Go here and just import that in. Okay, and then I'm going to copy this for all my major stuff. So my links, my paragraphs, my unordered lists, my ordered lists, my heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five, and heading six will all have the same font family. Okay. So we go back here, hit refresh, you see the font has changed, okay? Um, now our menu, um, for our nav, we're gonna display that using the flex. Um, and we're gonna justify the content to the center. It's gonna center our menu items. And here, and they come together, um, there's no spacing in between them. So for the links, I'm gonna give a padding uh, 10 pixels and I'm gonna take away the text decoration. Okay, and we'll do that. And we'll see, we now have that. Um, so we have our menu on top um, and maybe we'll make the font weight bold. Let's see what that does. A little bit, a little bit darker. We might change the color later, but um, not for now. Okay, uh, what else? Um, maybe we'll do a cool function when they hover. Um, when you hover over a nav link, you're going to get a background color of light gray. Okay. See, that's kind of nice. Okay, so you know you're hovering. It gives a little interactivity through your CSS. Um, okay, the main function, or sorry, the main part of the website, uh, I'm gonna have that float left, and I'm gonna have that, um, the width is gonna be 70%, okay? And then for the aside, I'm gonna have that float uh, right, and the width is gonna be 26%. Okay, let's see what happens there. Okay, so now we've got that coming. Um, we want the footer to be there, and we want some spacing probably. So the footer um, display I'm gonna have is an inline block, and um, the width is going to be a hundred percent. Okay, so you see the footer goes back down to the bottom. Um, uh, the main paragraph, I want 
on some padding. Uh, 15 pixels. Okay, so that kind of brings it into the center a little bit. Um, actually, let's do that a little bit differently. Let's make the top padding um, five pixels, the side padding 15 pixels, bottom padding five pixels, and then the left 15 pixels. So you go from top, right, down, left. So, okay, so that makes it a little bit nicer. Um, Headings. I want all my headings centered. Okay, so we'll say text align and we'll center. Okay. Alright, so those center. Um, the lists here. Uh, let's say the aside. Third lists, I want um, the list style is going to be none. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And so that's looking kind of nice. I mean, this is just a quick, you know, making the website look uh, somewhat decent quickly. Uh, bottom footer, um, we're going to have a text align. I'm going to align the text in the center. Okay. So we'll do that. Comes over there. Okay. Um, you know, and, and I can mess around with stuff. I can say the border top is going to be two pixels solid with maybe uh, this dark color here. Fresh. I've got, you know, kind of my footer is separated. Um, I can do the same thing here with the header. I like to organize from top to bottom. Um, doesn't really matter, but so we'll say the border bottom, the two picks solid, same color. Okay, so uh, seeing some delineation there. Um, so for the main paragraph, um, I want to make the line height uh, 1.6 relative units. Let's be, might be the same. Yeah, it spaces out a little bit. And I want to make uh, font size a little bit larger. So instead of one, it's usually one, I'll do 1.1. 1 .1. And that makes the font size a little bit longer, or larger. Um, you know, um, playing with it a bit. Let's change the color to that same dark color. I don't know if you'll actually see this. It lightened it just a little bit, um, you know, adding some contrast. We could do, uh, I think it's left border, let's see, or maybe border left, yeah. I don't know if this will be worth doing, but let's try it. So I got a little border there between the main and the, the side, that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> let's do some borders. Let's have some fun. Uh, let's do a border left here. Um, same thing. Keep it consistent throughout the site. Okay. It kind of isolates the content a little bit. Um, and then with the aside. Actually, I don't want to do it on the side. Um, the body. Actually. Actually, sorry. Let me take this out here. Control X. We'll move that up to the body. We'll do border left and border right. And then same thing. Let's see how that comes out. Okay, so we've got it in a nice little box. I don't know if you like that or not, but um, okay, so this is a page. Um, if we go to click on the about page, object gives us object not found. So what we can do is we can also create, and I'll show you how this works. We can create, uh, not in the CSS, I don't want to do that. I want to do, let's just go in there, we'll do plus file about.php. Um, okay, this is the about page. About page, uh, about skunk, skunk. 
com. Okay, and here we're gonna do um, just those PHP tags. So header.html. Uh, we'll do a main tab. About and then a little paragraph. This is about me. Hundred. Okay. And we're gonna view. Uh, let's toggle the word wrap. Okay. And we also want to include the um, side and the footer. Okay, all right, so now we go back up here, we refresh, go to about, and we don't have the style sheet coming in. Um, and something 15, line 15, what error are we getting? Uh, Side.php. Okay, and then we also want to link in the style sheet. Um, okay. You can do that. All right, so we've got our about page. Now, I want to play with the CSS a bit. We've got our home, we've got our about. You'll see these are the same. The sidebar is staying the same. The footer and the header are the same. It's all brought in. So now, let's say I wanted to change the header. Let's say I wanted to add another link called uh, privacy policy. I'll have to create this, of course. Um, Control and save, privacy policy, and then, oh, look at that. Well, now I've got the privacy policy there on the about page. I've got it on the home page. It just boom, instantly brought in. Um, you know, you know, you can add a whole bunch of stuff. It makes it so you can quickly uh, wrap up a website. Now, I don't think I'm going to do this weird box thing um, throughout. So I don't like that, but let's. You can quickly get rid of it. Change your theme. Um, I don't like the, uh, the aside. We don't really need that. Um, okay, you can quickly change a few things about your theme. I like the top and the bottom. That's kind of cool and clean. And then you can start writing and uh, make your website. And then you got these files. You just upload them to the server. Once you're done, you actually write some something that's interesting, and you have these easy pages to go to. Um, I can create these posts, and then go to the post and have do the same thing as I did the, the about page. You know, do that PHP include function for the header, the footer, and the side um, file, and just bring them all in. And it makes it nice and easy to whip up a quick website, a quick little blog, um, and you can create in the sidebar using. PHP include function, you can create your own little widgets um, and it'll display throughout the site. Um, this is not yet, one more thing, this is not mobile optimized, so one thing I should do is do a little bit of mobile optimization. So I'm going to say at media um, and then we'll do the max width of 800 pixels um, and we could say 900 pixels really but yeah maybe maybe as it gets a little smaller actually maybe let's do 600 pixels I'm gonna say the main and change the width to 100% and also with the aside uh, I'm gonna change the width to 100% hit control and save okay refresh and Is that not working? Let's check. We got the aside tags. Uh, not working because of that. I can't put that in. There. Okay. So you got to be careful with your code. Um, let's, let's bring it down. It should work now. Going, going, going. And at 600 pixels, boom, it goes and it brings now this down to the bottom. 
I would have to play with the CSS. I'd want to center this. Um, recent posts. Um, and one way I could do that is I could say... So let's do a recent post. We'll say this is div, and we'll give it a class of... center it's called center column okay and we'll just do it for this one just to show you and then we'll come down here to the minor stuff we'll type center column and we'll do a display of flex uh, the flex direction will be um, column and we're going to align items in the center. That should do it. It's, yeah. Okay. So, we've got that. Um, and it looks like that there. We can play with this a little bit, but uh, we could then, if you really wanted to, go to archives, pass in the class of center column. That's just, uh, and then hit refresh. And it moves it over. Okay, and then once you get small, it has them in the center. Now again, you might want to play with this a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. It looks a little off center there. Um, I might not want a list. I might want to get rid of the list items to help that out. So um, might actually just make these links. We'll try that. Um, so let's just call this. Uh, Archive one, make some copies and change the numbers. Okay. Okay, and we'll go two, three, four, five. Okay, and we'll refresh it. And see now it now it's lining up nicely in the center. We go down. Here, we've got it lined up. We're going to have to do something about the padding on the bottom. Um, but you can quickly do up a, um, a blog template with a little bit of CSS and some PHP, and then upload it to your server, and you're ready to go. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll keep trying to post these videos. I haven't been doing them for a while, but uh, thank you for tuning in.